President Joe Biden reversing a long-standing U.S. policy involving the war in Ukraine. Biden now going to allow Ukrainian forces to use long-range U.S. weapons inside of Russia for the very first time. CNN's Kevin Liptak is traveling with the president in Brazil. Kevin, what more are you learning? Yeah, this is a major change in American policy, and it comes at a critical point in the war in Ukraine as uh, Russian forces mass in the city and around the city of Kursk as they prepare for an offensive there, and as North Korea has sent thousands of its troops to fight alongside Russia in that conflict, President Biden making this decision to allow Ukraine to fire the American attack of missiles inside Russia for the first time. And this had been the subject of a long-running debate inside the American government about the wisdom of allowing Ukraine this new capability. There were officials who were concerned about the risk of escalation in this war. That's something that President Biden has been concerned about throughout the conflict. You also heard officials worry about the stockpiles of attack arms. These are not uh, resources in endless supply. At the end of the day, the addition of the North Korean troops to this conflict certainly has created a new sense of concern in Washington about where this war could be headed. It's a subject of conversation that President Biden has had throughout his trip this week in South America. He discussed it uh, earlier in Lima, Peru, with the leaders of Japan and South Korea. He also discussed it yesterday with the Chinese President Xi Jinping, uh, trying to apply pressure on Beijing to apply pressure on its largest, or, or on North Korea, which is China's uh, largest trading partner, to try and convince Kim Jong Un that this was a mistake and that it could put his own troops at risk. But now this decision, I think, um, certainly uh, for American officials, uh, they do hope that it could help uh, turn the tide in this conflict, but also send a signal to countries like North Korea that it sends its troops into this war at their own peril, Frederica. All right, Kevin Liptak, uh, let us know when you know more. Thank you so much. Joining me right now is CNN military analyst Colonel Cedric Layton. Uh, Colonel, great to see you. So first off, explain what uh, these missiles are all about, this Army Tactical Missile System, or sometimes referred to as ATACMS. Uh, talk to me about what they are, their capability, and why this is a potential turning point. Yeah, Frederica, the uh, MGM-148 TACMs, as you mentioned, the Army Tactical Missile System, has a range of around 180 to 190 miles. And what it can do is it can attack things like uh, ammunition depots, troop concentrations, uh, logistical centers, all of those kinds of things that could resupply a front line. Uh, so what the purpose of this is, uh, from the Biden administration standpoint, is to actually make it possible for the Ukrainians to prevent the Russians and the North Koreans from attacking the Ukrainian concentrations in Kursk, which is the territory of Russia that Ukraine has occupied since August. So these missiles are designed to go in and to take out those kinds of things like those logistics installations that I described, and they're designed to do this in a very efficient, very lethal manner. And uh, it's a one of the most lethal weapons that the U.S. has in its arsenal. And uh, if the Ukrainians can use it uh, the same way that the U.S. would use it in a similar situation, then it could very much change uh, the way in which the, uh, the the war is being fought right now. So would there be conditions attached, might the U.S. have said, OK, we you know, give the green light to use these, um, but they do have to be logistical locations, like you just mentioned, logistical uh, Russian uh, you know, targets. Um, would there be any further guidance from the U.S. on how and what the conditions are in which to use these? Yeah, I'm certain there is further guidance from the Biden administration to the Ukrainians on this. Uh, what they will probably say is that you can only attack those installations that are supplying the war effort against you in, in Ukraine or in Kursk in this particular instance. Uh, so the idea would be, Frederica, that they would go in and uh, they would give them a list of targets that they can hit. 
Uh, the Ukrainians would uh, perhaps uh, provide a list of targets that they would like to hit, and then they would say, yes, you can use these weapons to hit those targets, or no, you can't hit those targets. One thing that would definitely be off the list would be nuclear installations or anything that would affect the strategic warfighting capability of Russia. That would most likely be off the list at this point in time. And then how much of this is also in response uh, to North Korean troops uh, being in Russia and potentially assisting in this war uh, in Ukraine? Uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that the North Koreans are in Russia doing this and uh, providing support to the Russians and probably joining them in a military sense. So uh, what the Biden administration is signaling is that that kind of addition to the Russian war machine is unacceptable to us. We don't want foreign troops coming into Russia, supporting the Russian war effort. And uh, the North Koreans are the first ones to do this overtly, at least. And uh, the signal to the North Koreans as well as the Chinese is not to support uh, the Russian war effort, at least not that overtly. What are the potential repercussions uh, if North Korean troops are also uh, taken out along with Russian troops, even though the targets, as you said, would be logistical targets? Um, consequently, there might be an, uh, also um, personnel might be involved or taken out. What would be the potential consequences here? Uh, the potential consequences could be somewhat far-reaching. It's possible the North Koreans could react uh, against South Korea, for example, or against U.S. troops in South Korea. So uh, this is definitely a possible possibility that I'm sure the Biden administration has considered, and I would suspect that they have also increased their defensive capabilities in South Korea as a result of this decision. So that's the kind of thing that could happen. It's also true that the Russians will probably try to respond one way or another. They may not do so in a direct uh, way, one that we would notice right away. It could be a cyber attack. It could be sabotage. Those are the kinds of things that we could expect Russia to do. But we would hope that uh, they would not escalate uh, to, a, you know, to a point of no return. Uh, this is the kind of thing that the Biden administration has sought to avoid until now when it's become pretty clear that the Ukrainians are having difficulty uh, not only in Kursk but also on the eastern front in the Donbass region. Uh, uh, President Biden is on his way to the G20 summit. What might be the reaction coming from world leaders on this move? Well, I think it would depend on which world leader you're talking to. Certainly, uh, China is, would not be enthusiastic about this. Uh, the Russians are not enthusiastic about it for obvious reasons. Uh, but uh, the Western European nations, uh, the Koreans, the Japanese, uh, they are probably quite uh, okay with this. And certainly the Ukrainians are very happy that this has finally happened for them. They've been waiting for this kind of approval for a very long time, really since the start of the latest uh, in, in invasion back in February of 2022. And that is something that uh, they have sought for a long time because they believe, uh, and I think rightly, that uh, the ability to hit targets deep inside Russia is essential for them to be successful in their ability uh, to not only keep in Ukraine independent, uh, but also to prosecute, obviously, their war effort. 